I'm back with another video. So let's have a little chat. Something else crossed my mind. I was watching a young man's video and his experience in um, dealing with, in this particular video, he was at a place called Wing Stop, and he was ordering him some wings and he was video recording how the supervisor, who happened to be another gay black young man, just like this young man in the video, um, I'm assuming that the supervisor was a young gay black guy, um, how this supervisor was being so rude and disrespectful towards him. And the young man said that this supervisor had an attitude with him for no reason. And when he asked him, could he have a soda before his food got there? He said that the supervisor who took his order slammed the soda down on the counter. And then he asked, then the young man asked for his, um, his money back and rightfully so. And rightfully so, he asked for his money back because then he said that this person threatened to do something to his food. Here is what I want to talk about. And suffice it to say, you know, the supervisor tried to proceed to attack this young man, but this young man wasn't no motherfucking punk. He was telling them, come on out here and do what you got to do. I'm about that motherfucking life. And I believe that he is. I believe that he is. Just like I am. But anyway, that's another story. But I wanted to just talk about the, the spirit and the energy behind bad black customer service. I just want to talk about that. Bad black customer service, black men and black women, both of y'all, both, I have experienced this. Let me tell you some of my experiences. Let me start with the most recent. I called my utility company because I wanted them to um, change something on my bill or I wanted to inquire about something in regards to my bill. And I had to call in three times. All of them were black women. I had to call in three times to finally get the result that I wanted. The second person that I spoke with, she was nice on the phone in the beginning or kind of nice. But then she looked at my bill and said, oh, you owe $98. With $45 is the past due amount. I'm like, bitch, what the fuck are you talking about? This is what I was saying in my mind. Number one, I wasn't even calling in about my bill. I pay my bill in advance. I will drop $200 on my motherfucking bill so I won't have to fucking pay it. I'll do that sometimes. I have not had to pay a bill in months. Because I don't, cons in, in, this, in this apartment, I don't consume that much electricity. So my bill averages maybe between $50 to $75 a month. I don't consume that motherfucking much electricity or anything like that. My bill is very small. So she says, you owe $98. And bleh. I was like, miss, I said, that's not even why I'm calling in. I said, but I don't owe that much on my bill. I said, I'm looking at my bill and it says I owe $53 and some change, which is a normal electric bill for me because I live in an apartment. I don't pay that much for no damn electric. I don't use that much electric. I don't have any children. It's only me here. So I don't use that much electricity. So she tried to tell me that I owed this amount. Then she started huffing and puffing and breathing all hard like she was getting ready to blow. I said, are you okay? I said, because you sound so angry and bitter. Then she says to me, ma'am, she thought I was a woman on the phone because I have a beautiful voice. She thought I was a woman. 
So she was giving me all of this energy because she thought I was another woman talking to her on the phone. She thought I was a black woman talking to her on the phone. So she thought it was appropriate for her to act in that way. I cussed that bitch out. I cussed her out and told her to kiss my ass and I slammed the phone down on that bitch. I gave her something to think about because then she be, before I did that, she says to me, listen, I'm not trying to disrespect you, ma'am. I let her continue to think that I was a woman because I wanted to see how far she would go. So if I had told you I was a man, you would have you would have been nicer to me on the phone. That was the logic that I was thinking. Now, my first name is unisex, but most people with my first government name and the way that it is spelled, you would know that I'm a male. So I don't know if that bitch was crazy or she just wasn't paying attention. Probably a little bit of both. But when she said to me, ma'am, I don't want to disrespect you, that's when I lost it. I said, oh, this bitch thinks that I'm a black woman. So she thinks that it's okay for her to talk to me in that manner. So it's okay for you to be disrespectful to black women on the phone and you a black woman, your motherfucking self. I'm just talking, y'all. I'm just talking. I'm just, I'm just talking. So what is the spirit behind that? What's the energy behind the bad, bad black customer service? And I'm talking about black people who treat black customers like crap all the time. But then they switch up and change their entire energy for white customers. So nevertheless, I called back in, got another lady, very nice lady. She was a black woman too. Very nice lady. She said, sir, I'm so sorry that you had to go through that. She said, that person was reading your bill wrong. She was reading your bill wrong. You've already paid that amount. That's the amount that was paid. And it was never overdue. I said, thank you. But I was pissed off. I was pissed off. This is Pepco. You know, people that live in the D.C. area, they know what I'm talking about. Pepco uh, Power Company. And they have some low vibrating, no customer service having motherfuckers that work for Pepco. I don't even want to talk to the supervisors because they ain't shit either. Let me tell you another story. Tell you another story. One time I was at Costco's. Everybody knows what Costco's is. I'm, pr I'm pretty sure just about every state has a Costco's. I was at Costco's. I used a friend's membership. She was waiting outside in the car. I went inside to buy whatever I needed to buy, right? Okay. So when I get up to the cash register, it's a black guy. And he says to me, this isn't your card because I had a bottle of wine in my cart, had a bottle of wine. He says to me, this isn't your card. This isn't your membership. They've never given me a problem before. This was back in 2013. So I said, he said, well, I can't let you buy anything. I said, okay. They had never given me a problem, a problem before. You know, now this nigga, he wants to be a problem. Number one, when I approached the register, he already had an attitude in the beginning anyway. He already had his face turned up any motherfucking way. And you know, most of my bad customer service experiences have been with other black men. I just want to put that out there first. 
Most of my bad customer service experiences have been with other black men. So I went out, I said, okay, okay. So they made me get out of the line. And then another guy, a young guy came and took my cart and pushed it all the way out, of, like down the aisle, just to be nasty. He put, he didn't bring it to me. He pushed it all the way down the aisle. So I, I was pissed off. So I get on the phone and I call my friend and I tell her what she was outside in the car waiting for me because I didn't have a lot to get. I called her and I said, I said, Jarnette, I'm gonna call her Jarnette. I said, Jarnette, I said, they are giving me a problem in Costco's. I said, they're in here tripping because they're saying the membership is not mine. So you have to come in. So the young man, he had long plaits, I'll never forget it. He was looking at me, gritting on me and all, this is in Costco's. And for people who are in DC, it's that Costco's right over here on South Dakota Avenue, you know over there where they got them uh, townhomes and shit. People in D.C. know what I'm talking about. That ghetto ass motherfucking Costco's over here on South Dakota Avenue. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I can't stand that fucking Costco's. I can't stand them. Now, I think they've gotten a little bit better, but not much. Their customer service sucks. It sucks ass. And most of the people that work in there are black. And... The nasty attitudes that I have received have come from other black men. But that's not surprising because, you know, you know, niggas in D.C., we already established what they are. We already know what they vibrating on, the rat level. But that's another story, child. So this dude is gritting on me, making comments to another dude that works there. I, I, from what I remember, I think that person had on a uniform as well. I don't know who the fuck he think he talking about, but I ain't the motherfucking one. I heard him say that. And I turned to that motherfucker and I said, and you ain't number two either, motherfucker. You ain't the first choice and you ain't the fucking second choice. I said, who the fuck you think you talking to, you fucking piece of nigga trash? And I said that in front of a bunch of motherfucking white people. Yes, I did. Because... They didn't treat those white customers that way. And I'm not saying that they should have, by the way. I'm not saying that they should have. And I'm not saying that you should treat people better or worse because of skin color. But I noticed a pattern of behaviors with black people in, black, in, in customer service and how they treat black customers. Especially black customers like me. I'm always ready to tip and, and to show appreciation to people in service positions. I never have a bone in my body where I, and I can say that without a doubt, I never have a bone in my body where I am trying to act like I'm better than somebody or I'm trying to act like they're beneath me. I always appreciate people in service positions. But they got chips on their motherfucking shoulders, number one, because they got that white spirit on them. And number two, I believe that it's the spirit of, the, of their training that subliminally trains them to mistreat other black customers, to, to mistreat black customers and to treat other customers better. But I don't even think it's about skin color. I think it's about judgment because see, I dress like a street person, child. I don't dress prestigious, child. I wear my jeans. I wear my polo shirts like any other boy or, or, or man. You know, I don't, I don't, um, you know, I, I don't dress, you know, in suit and ties and all that because I don't have to. I work for myself. I'm self-employed so I can do what the fuck I want to do, but they don't know that. They just look at me, oh, this is just another nigga coming off the street. I can treat him or her any type of motherfucking way. And that is why sometimes I have an issue with what Monique was saying about the bonnets. Because you don't know who that person may be. Now, I'm not saying that decorum is not important. I'm not saying that. But we cannot set up a culture where we're judging people based upon how they fucking dress. Because they have shows all the time 
called undercover boss. And that person comes in there and people treat that person badly. And then when they find out that that's the owner, then they like, oh, they got egg on their fucking face. Because look, they're like, oh, I didn't know. Well, you should treat everybody the same way. I cussed that motherfucker out to the white meat and I tormented him with my mouth because I knew I could and I knew it, he, it was nothing he could do about it. He wanted to beat my ass in that motherfucking store that day. He wanted to cuss me out. He, You could see it. It was all in his fucking face, but he couldn't do nothing about it. But you know what? The fact of the matter is he started that, but his black employees, they all took up for him. If I were a white person, they wouldn't have done that. They wouldn't have done that. They would not have done that. This is a pattern for black people who work in customer service. This is a pattern. When they hear that it's a black person on the phone, when you're calling Verizon or calling Pepco, their entire attitude changes. They start speaking to you as if you are beneath them. And that's a fucking problem. Or they start speaking to you in a condescending tone and they expect you not to pick up on that. See, I pick up on it because I pick up on frequencies and vibrations very well. I pick up on that shit. And I can feel it when somebody is trying to be slick out their fucking mouth or trying to treat me in a uh, demeaning, degrading way. I pick up on it. I turned that day in 2013, I turned Costco's out. I turned it out so badly, I was embarrassed to go back there, child. But I eventually went back. And suffice it to say, I didn't see that motherfucker working in there no more because he probably got fired. I cursed him out and called him every name in the book. And I called him a nigga in front of those white people because he deserved it. Because he didn't have to treat me in that manner. He didn't have to push my cart all the way down the aisle. He could just say, here you go, sir. You know, when you when you get it settled out, when you get when you get everything settled, then you can come back in the line and we'll take you right up. No problem. That's, that's what a, a real black person would have done. But no, they were trying to be nasty because they're rats. They're rats. Yeah, I'm calling them rats. Not because they're black, but because of their vibration and their fucking behavior. There's definitely a spirit behind that. And I think that it's connected to the subliminal training that they get when they get these jobs. And I think somewhere within that training, they teach them on a subliminal level. They're, they're too slow to see it, but they teach them on a subliminal level to treat black customers very badly or not to have any regard for black customers. Yeah, you want our fucking money, but you want to treat us badly. And then you niggas wonder why. And I'm going to say something that's very controversial, but I don't give a fuck. Because sometimes you have to say things to get people's attention. And I'm going to say something that's going to rattle you. And I don't care. But I don't say it in hatred. I say it to wake you up. You wonder why. And I hope you can hear me. I turn my fan on. You wonder why Latinos and Mexicans, Hispanics, well, Latinos and Mexicans, you wonder why they're taking over the customer service industry. You know why? Because they're better at it. They're better at it. Me and a friend of mine, we went to uh, McDonald's one day, and I really don't eat McDonald's like that, but I will eat their breakfast sometimes, you know? And we got a a breakfast um, meal, the pancakes and stuff like that. And um, they messed up the order. The manager came out. She corrected it. We were in the drive-thru. She corrected it. Hit Mexican lady. Very sweet. No problem. Boom. 
boom, it was no problem. And then you wonder why they're taking over the way that they are. Because they're better at customer service. That's not a slap to you, but that's just to get you to think. When I go into a business, I want to feel welcomed. I don't want to walk into a business where people are gritting on me. Or making you feel unwelcomed. Like black men have mainly done. When I've gone into businesses that are not even fucking theirs. You niggas don't own Walmart. I remember one time I went to that Walmart. Y'all in D.C., here we go again. Y'all that live in D.C., the one up there by, um, the one on Riggs Road that, that used to be across the street from the old, well, the KFC is not there anymore. But y'all know the uh, Walmart, the Walmart on Riggs Road, the one that has the apartments over top. Okay. Me and this same friend, we went to Walmart. That's my, that's my hanging partner, child. And she's an older lady, but she's, she's cool in the game. We went to Walmart and I was, somebody had left their cart in the underground parking lot because you know at that Walmart, they have an underground parking lot. So I was going in to the Walmart, I had my cart and this nigga going to stop me talking about, uh, uh, you can't bring that cart in here. There are carts already upstairs. Because you know you have to get on the elevator or the escalators to get upstairs to the store. I said, huh? He's stopping me from coming into the Walmart from bringing my motherfucking cart. I said, what are you talking about? Now, he didn't say nothing to my friend, but he said something to me. I said, and I, and I, and I, and I didn't, I did this for a reason. I said, well, my friend is bringing hers in. I said, why, why can't I bring mine in? Then he's going to say, well, never mind then. I was pissed off. And I bumped into him later on in the store. He had every ample opportunity to say, listen, my bad was no problem. But black men have a problem with apologizing. That's why so many of you have heart problems. That's why so many of you have digestive problems. Because you don't know how to swallow your pride and say, I'm sorry. A lot of you don't even know how to accept apologies because you're so hurt. And you carry that with you on these jobs. You carry that with you in places that you should not. So, I contacted the manager. The motherfucker never called me back. Never said I'm sorry. Of course, the manager was a black man, you know, which is why women are taking you out of your positions now because you motherfucking niggas don't know how to fucking manage. Women do a better job at managing than men. I'm sorry. When it comes to certain businesses, like managing apartment buildings, man, women are usually better at business management. I'm just being honest. Because they care more about how their customers feel. When I speak to a female supervisor, it's a whole different world than speaking to a male supervisor, especially a black male supervisor. Not saying that I have not had good experiences with black male supervisors, but for the most part, them niggas have been nothing but trash. They've been nothing but trash. And this video that this young man posted it just reminded me of the bad patterns of bad black, bad black customer service reps. That man in that Wingstop place was a supervisor who was trying to fight a customer. And then you all wonder why you can't get a fucking job. You wonder why Hispanics are taking over in certain areas. Because you know why? When I go into an establishment like Five Guys, the young Hispanic guys are smiling. They're welcoming you. You know, they make you feel good. And they're cute too. I, I ain't blind. You know, I wanted to slip one of them my goddamn number. You know I'm a goddamn trip child, but that's another story. They're, you know, they welcome you. They don't make you feel like, why would I want to eat from an establishment with a bunch of ugly ass, nasty fucking energy. And I hate to say this, 
black people wonder why black people don't want to patronize your business. It's not that we think that you're beneath us. It's not that I want to patronize others. It's because of your attitudes. It's because of your attitudes. Black men primarily. I'm referring to. Your nasty, prejudiced, disposition attitudes. You can't just give good customer service to people who you think look good to you. You have to give good customer service to people regardless. And I'm not saying that some customers are not assholes. I'm not saying that. But I'm only an asshole if you're an asshole to me. I had a guy, and I'm not bragging, but I believe in tipping. Because when you tip, you get that money back a whole lot. There's a, there's, there's a magic to tipping people. There's a certain science and magic to tipping. Because what you're doing is you're opening up a gateway and a roadway for prosperity to come back to you. That's the karma create. That's karma, you know, in the in the more uh, beneficial or positive sense. You want to open up that gateway of prosperity and bring that back to you. See, these people in that bad customer service shit, they don't get that concept. That man at that wing stop should be fired. He should not be allowed to work in customer service again. I am so glad that young man posted that on YouTube. I am so glad he did that. He should post it all on his uh, 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 social media websites. That motherfucker should be fired. He should be fired and he should not be allowed to work in customer service again. It's bad enough that black people have to deal with racial profiling when we go into stores. And then that's another thing. When I was in my early 20s, when I used to live over there um, in Northeast D.C., um, there's a Safeway over there by the old, well, well, what used to be the old Heckinger Mall. There was a safe, there's a Safeway over there on Maryland Avenue. And the security guard was a black man in there. He used to follow me around in the fucking store all the time. Y'all be thinking it's white people. No, it's other black people that do this bullshit. It's other black people that do this type of shit all the time. Doesn't mean that white people don't do it. But by me living here in D.C., I see the dysfunction of black people. I see it all the time. And this is not me taking up for no motherfucking white people or nobody else. But I'm pointing out some shit. Sometimes shit needs to be pointed out so people can understand where you're coming from. This is my magic. This is what I do. I'm the occult view. My voice is my bread and butter. My voice is my power. This is how you make change. You can't change individual people. But you can certainly change motherfucking reality. You can change reality across the fucking realms. You can do that. And the reality is black people, particularly black men, have a serious problem in working in customer service. I've had to cuss them motherfuckers out a multitude of times. I've had to cuss out very few black women. But ultimately, I'm talking about both. But from my experience, it's been mainly black men just like that nigga at that wing stop. But no, they ain't never tried to jump on me like that because if, if they did, I would annihilate them. If they got close to me, it would be no questions asked. None. And I'm not big and bad, I'm just bad. No, I may not win the physical the physical fight, but I'll win the motherfucking war. You get my motherfucking drift? But later for that stuff, I, all I'm saying is this. This needs to be examined. Because this is a pattern for African Americans in customer service. Especially when they're dealing with other African Americans. Like I said, 
when I go to Five Guys, they, they somebody had said to me, oh, it used to be a bunch of black people working in Five Guys, but now they're being replaced with uh, Mexicans and Latinos. You know why? Because they're better at customer service. They're not walking around with a chip on their motherfucking shoulder. They're not angry and bitter at you and jealous because you can afford to come in there and buy a burger and they can't. See, this is why I like Instacart. You know why I like Instacart? Because Instacart don't let you motherfuckers, they not gonna let you motherfuckers fuck up their brand. Whenever you have a problem with Instacart, whenever there's an unruly customer, whenever there's an issue with customer service or there's an unruly shopper, oh, they get on it immediately. Oh, they be like, oh, we're going to refund you. And we're going to also make sure that we contact that person's supervisor. And I believe them when they say it. Instacart is more prestigious. They're not going to let you fuck up their brand. They're not going to let you fuck up their brand. Same thing as with Uber and Lyft. They're not going to let you fuck up their brand. They're not going to let you come in with your nasty, prejudiced, homophobic attitudes, black men. They're not going to let you do that. Something that you didn't even build and create. That's, that's just real fucking talk. I'm not talking being mean. I'm talking customer service. Just like when Sheree went to that event planner, I forgot that ugly motherfucker's name, when she went to, I wish I was there that day, and he, if I was with Sheree, and I was a friend of hers, and that motherfucker went off on her like that, me and him would have been fighting. We would have been fighting, I would have been all up in that motherfucker's face, because one thing I know about bitch motherfuckers like that, that do that to women especially, he was trying to fight her. I would have been all up in that bitch nigga's motherfucking face and he would have backed down because I could tell that he was a bitch motherfucking nigga. Just like that event planner in that episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, look at how he got all up in Sheree's face. She's paying you to do something for her. And then you motherfuckers wonder why nobody wants to support black male businesses. You wonder why. You wonder why. Look at what we have to put up with. You wonder why. So, I'm passionate about this. That's why I'm yelling. Because I'm passionate. And I'm angry. I admit it, I'm angry because I've gone through that. You know, anger and passion are creativity. That's power. And the only way to really change something is to expose it. And I'm not and I'm not beating up on, 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 on black men. I'm talking about these types who are in these positions and the black women too. And anybody that's in a position of customer service, because I've, I've had it out with whites. I've had it out with white customer service reps, too. I've, I've had to cuss them out, too, and call them all types of motherfucking names, too, at times. But I noticed that there's a, a, a specific pattern and there's a serious problem with African-Americans who are working in the customer service industry and how they treat African-American customers. There is a problem with that. And there's a spirit behind that. And I think the spirit is subliminal training. They don't know it, but whenever they go through any type of training for whatever job that they have, they program them to mistreat black customers. I don't know where in their company charter they do that, but believe you me, I believe they do it. I believe they do it. Or they're just programmed to think that they can talk to black people any type of way. When I'm paying my motherfucking money, bitch or nigga, you will not talk to me any type of way. You will not. Or you will get my verbal wrath. And not just to you, to your face, but also away from you where it really is going to fucking matter. 
whatever happened to good customer service <laughs> but anyway i just wanted to come through and i wanted to um express that because um my little brother from the uk he sent me the video and i was like well damn this dude is supposed to be a supervisor acting like this what spirits are up under him? You know they in Philadelphia. Philadelphia got a lot of chaotic, havoc-having spirits that's attached to a lot of the black people there, just like here in D.C. That's why the energies here in D.C. and Philadelphia sometimes feel similar. You know, there are a lot of chaos, there's a lot of chaotic energy. And I don't mean chaotic in terms of, you know, creative melanin. I mean chaotic in terms of havoc. You could tell that that dude was up under some, there was a spirit behind him. I could tell by even how he was walking. That was a spirit. And you got to know the difference. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Whatever happened to good customer service, child? <laughs>